Decision boundaries are a useful way to understand the classifier. I'll show you how to generate decision boundary plots and how to display them on our chart. We continue with the code from last time, so make sure you have it or get my version from GitHub and let's draw a line between visualizations. Get it? Draw a line? Because decision boundary is no, 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 no. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. Now, this spider is cool but it's not very informative. I mean, to figure out why this is a house, you would need to count all of these different things and not very useful, really. We can get more information from something called the decision boundary plot. And I'll teach you how to get to that. But first we need to refactor some of this code so we can do this evaluation also in our node environment. Let me close some of these things here. And in our node folder, I'll create a new file, run evaluation.js. And let's begin by loading our constants. And our utils, I'm just going to copy this and say utils. Now we're going to create a place to hold our classifiers. Like our KNN classifier will be in common classifiers KNN.js. Let's pretend we have it for now and just see what we would do with it if it was there. Sometimes it's good to think like that. Let's access the file system and I'll put a log here for running classification. First thing we need for classification is to get a hold of our training samples. I'm just parsing the data in our training JSON file and I'm calling it training samples. What we would do next is instantiate our k nearest neighbor classifier as a new knn on the training samples and a value of k maybe 50 that's all we need then we test we get our testing samples from the other json file like this and compute the accuracy similar as what we did on the web page. I am going to initialize total count and correct count and go through all the samples of the testing samples. And for each of them, I'm going to want to predict what the label is by calling KNN predict given this testing sample point. The correct count will increase if it's a correct prediction and the total count regardless. Then let's log in the console. Similar as on the web page, the accuracy column and then concatenate with correct count, total count, and format the percent using our utility function in parentheses. Okay, that's all we want in this file, but now let's implement this KNN class. We'll do it in common, and here we need to create a new folder for classifiers. Eventually we'll have more than just the K nearest neighbor. In it, we create a new file, knn.js, and start defining our class. 
constructor will take some samples and a K. It will store them and the K. And we predict a given point. To implement this, I'm just going to take the code from viewer HTML, the one for our classification. Paste it here and fix a few things. This training samples now is this samples in both these places. So here and here. K is also this K. So I need to be careful with that. Otherwise, we're fine. This is called point in both places. But the return is different. Uh, we are not returning just the label, but also the nearest samples. It could be useful to have both of them, maybe even more data sometimes, like probabilities. So I'll keep this as such and change our run evaluation script accordingly. By destructuring here, label as predicted label, like so. Now, we also need to remember in knn.js to go down and export this object. We will use it also in the web. So we need to check if module is existing there. And it uses from utils get nearest. Because of that, we have to require utils here. And because we use it on the web, I'm also going to check if utils doesn't already exist. Now in the terminal, we will type node run evaluation JS and we get an accuracy same as we did on the web page. No surprise there. Let's update the web page to use this new code that we wrote. I'm going to copy this and include the KNN classifier. And below here, I will instantiate it using the training samples and K. Now here, instead of classify, we can just ask KNN to predict this point. And the same thing below for the sketchpad. And we can remove this classify function completely. Let's refresh the page and everything still works as before. But now the code is only in one place and we don't make silly mistakes like changing one thing in one and forgetting about the other. Refactoring like this is really important. Now we can go to this run evaluation after printing the accuracy here and I'll teach you how to generate a decision boundary plot. Let's log that we are starting to do that. And we'll need to use a canvas. We use the create canvas function to generate a canvas of 100 times 100. And let's get an access to the 2D drawing context and use it to draw our plot. It will be a pixel based plot where we take each individual pixel of this canvas and treat it as a feature between zero and one, we'll normalize it. And then we will color the pixel depending on the predicted value. You'll see. We loop first on the x-axis, pixel by pixel, and the same on this y-axis. And let's create a normalized point here a point which will have the x component x divided by this canvas width and the y component is y divided by the canvas height. But we put a one minus that because eventually we'll put this plot on our chart here 
and it should start from the bottom and go upwards. Otherwise, it will be flipped like that. Now, let's get the label from predicting the point and choose a color from our styles in utils according to this label, like so. Now we can set the fill style to this color and draw a small rectangle at the XY location with one and one width and height, like one pixel. I'm gonna close this and write this image into a file using a buffer. It's gonna be a PNG image. We write it in a place where we need to define the constant for. And let's log here that we are done. We just need to add this constant next. So constants, I'll put it here at the end. The decision boundary will be in our data set directory. Decision boundary dot PNG. Save the file, return to our terminal and rerun the evaluation. You can see this decision boundary takes some time. And it's done. We can see it here in the data, data set decision boundary. And Visual Studio Code can open it here as well. It's a small image. It's 100 times 100 pixels. Generating larger is possible, but it will take a long time. So we'll work with this for now, and I'll show you higher resolution ones later. We now set this image as the background of our chart. We go to Viewer HTML, where we define our chart options here, and let's implement a new option, which will be for the background, BG. It will be a new image, and I'm going to set its source to be that of the decision boundary plot. Our chart doesn't support this background yet, so I'm going to chart, chart.js, to implement this feature. I'm going to take the background image out of the options here, store it as an attribute, and in our draw method, before drawing the samples here, I'm going to plot the image. I will first take the top left coordinate according to the data. It's the zero one point essentially, but we have to get the pixel value for it. So from the data bounds to the pixel bounds, we can put here zero one. And the size of this image is going to be the size of the chart minus the margin on both sides. And then we have to also divide this according to how the transformation was done, how the scaling was done using the second power. And then finally, we can draw this background at the top left location. We can spread this out like so, and then size, size for the width and height. It's a square aspect ratio. Let's save this, open the page, and it actually works. The image will appear here as soon as my mouse will hover it. I'm not waiting for the image to load, so hovering here redraws the chart after it has loaded, and I'm fine with this. You can see there are different colors on the background now, and they correspond to our samples. But zooming in, this image is really low resolution, so we could do with a better one. Also, this smoothing effect that happens here can be disturbing a bit. We can remove it, actually. If we go to the chart constructor, after we get a hold of this context, we can tell it to disable the smoothing by setting it to false. Let's save this, refresh, and now you can see these pixels here, sharp, 
But to understand things better, we'll need to look at an image with a higher resolution. And I've computed one in a few hours. It's 5000 by 5000, and it looks like this. And what it means is that actually we don't need to show the data anymore. Like if I'm gonna go here in the draw method and comment out drawing the samples, actually I think we can be without many things here. We don't need the samples or the hovered sample or the selected sample anymore. And here we don't need this part even. We just need to see where the point is. Let's refresh. And if I'm going to open this input and sketch something here, you can see the point here on the plot. And it's a fish because it's in the red area. But if this would go higher, it would instantly change to a bicycle, and then to a clock, and then let's see closer. Quite complex structure here. Reminds me of fractals or land masses. You could use this as a terrain generator. Now let's go even higher. So there it's a house, and then it's a tree, and so on. Much clearer in this way. We don't need to count how many nearest neighbors there are, how many labels, and, and so on. These colored regions tell us, and it's really interesting to look at how these different regions appear. Let me show you one for when k is set to 1. Very different, isn't it? To understand better, let me add the points again. And now let's zoom in a bit. You can see this green patch here. Every point inside it is closest to this tree. And this is the separating border between the tree and this pencil. If you know what the Voronoi is, then these edges here are a subset of that. And if we go inside the data, where it's more complex, you can really see this pattern. Each of the training samples are in their own little region. Sometimes multiple points make a bigger region like this. Did you follow along? Great! Please like this video if you learned something today and share it with others so they can learn as well. And if you got stuck somewhere, ask and we'll figure it out. You can also take my version from GitHub and compare. Alright, you now know about feature extraction, data scaling, classification and evaluation and you have a lot of tools under your belt. Your task, if you choose to accept it, is to calculate the accuracy for all possible values of k and create a line chart. Conclude what the best value is and generate a high-resolution decision boundary plot for it as well. Share these charts with me and I'll showcase the first correct answer in a future video. Next time, we'll review what we have studied so far using Python.